On Texas Eats, we're traveling around the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for French cuisine at the Pearl. If you love cheese, you have to get the raclette. It is served table side, and it's a half a cheese wheel that's melted on top. Plus, we pair Shiner beer with Texas barbecue. And I think this piece right here is going to be the real this, winner. This one right there? Yep. All right, right in the middle. I mean, how can you go wrong with a burn in, right? And we try a gastro pub in Houston owned by the season three winner of MasterChef. I mean, it's, it's the best that you want. That's what you think of when you think of really good Korean food. All that and more today on Texas Eats. First stop on today's foodie adventure is at a restaurant and bakery in Blanco, Texas. Now we're here in Blanco, Texas, right off the Blanco River, to go inside of a diner that's serving up some elevated comfort food. Let's go inside Josie's Kitchen. Joining me now is Jessica Haina. She is the baker and the co-owner out here at Josie's Kitchen. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you for being here. And everything looks phenomenal. I mean, this is probably like the most colorful, bright table that we've seen in quite a while. Now, I have to know, who's Josie? The restaurant was created by my husband and I. Josie is my husband's name and my name combined. I'm Jesse and his name is Joe. That's your celebrity combo name. Yeah. Is Jesse. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. Right in front of me, we have this burger. What's going on with that? So that is our goat cheeseburger. We use a Texas grass-fed beef patty, black pepper, bacon, and then the goat cheese. We locally source it. It's from CKC Farms here in Blanco. Nice soft buns on there as well. Some fresh produce. This is the goat burger out here. I'm gonna take a bite. It is so creamy, it's a little sweet, but it's savory, and the bread is so just perfect. It's nice and soft. The bacon sets it off with the goat cheese. The, the patty itself, a really nice flavor, a great texture on there as well. And then the brightness from the pickled red onions, that acidity is also cutting through the cheese as well. I mean, that's just a really killer bite. It's everything you want. That's a big burger too. It's a commitment. It's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta be ready when you order the burger. Um, I want to come over here now. This is a shrimp and grits. So we make cheesy grits. We use Becker Vineyard Chardonnay when we saute the shrimp, add a little bacon, some spices, and then there you have it. Smells wonderful. You can smell the seasonings off there. And I'm going to grab a little shrimp. Probably don't use your fingers if you're eating it here, right? But just do you. There's a lot of burgers and sandwiches on the menu. So when I saw shrimp and grits on there, you know I had to try it. So here's the sauce with the grits. Oh. And there's the shrimp. Mm, wow. I'm like shrimp and grits heaven right now. It's like almost a little bit smoky, but it's so much cheese in those grits. It just adds a lot of creaminess to the bite. It has a little like zing to it, but it's also a little bit, it has that saltiness you want. Like, it's just Southern comfort goodness. Yeah, definitely high calorie meal. <laughs> This is a panini sandwich. You have a lot of different options on the menu. Which one is this? This is our south side panini. We named it after our original location, which was in the south side of Blanco. You've got yourself sourdough bread, smoked turkey, avocado, serrano aioli. You got some bacon. Oh yeah. This is the south side. Here's the bite. That is so good. This one is like so simple, straightforward, but done right. And the flavors that you achieve just using that bacon, avocado, turkey combination, it just hits all the marks that you want. This is a really big portion, but it really, it does. It feels a lot like, it feels very light. It looks like some queso on top of, of fries going on over there, right? Those are our queso fries, yes. Ooh, I'm gonna try a little bit. How much of this is actually, are y'all cooking here in house? Everything, we even hand slice the, the fries. What do you have here? These look really fun. These are our taquitos. We hand roll them here, chicken taquitos. You got the guacamole, pico, more queso. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit of this action. Here we go, hand rolled taquitos, making a mess. I'm gonna keep this one. <laughs> <laughs> look at that, just loaded full of chicken. Like a little pico de gallo kind of action going on with the guac. It's very creamy. It's, it's almost still delicate, 
The crunch on there is very nice, but it's a, it's just really fun. So what got you into baking? You know, I started out in the baking field when I was 18 years old. Joe was running a restaurant in Austin and we wanted to go the old school route and so we decided to do pies and I've just been doing them since then. Which one is your top seller in the restaurant? It's gonna have to be the coconut cream. There we go, the coconut cream pie. Mm. That's a dense slice of pie. Pretty serious. And it's fantastic. If you love the coconut flavors, you're gonna love this bite. It has a little toasted coconut on top, but once you get in there as well, it, it's just so creamy, it's delicious, and it hits all the notes you want. This is like the ultimate dessert. I'll try the chocolate. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go you for it. You gotta do it. You gotta do it, right? I mean, <laughs> look at this thing. There's the chocolate pie. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That is like over the top decadence. It's pretty rich. It is, and what I like about it the most is that the chocolate is not, it's not light or airy. That is like a thick slice of chocolate running down the middle of it. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you for being here. You guys, Joseph's Kitchen, when you're in Blanco, Texas, and you wanna get something that's a little bit off the beaten path, but you gotta wanna stick to the Southern roots, Southern comfort food, this is where you come. This is where it's at. Get a drink, yeah, you just relax. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Now, we're cruising to San Antonio for an authentic taste of Chicago. Now we're here in San Antonio, Texas to go inside of a Chicago-style restaurant that's gonna show us how they make their Italian beef from start to finish. Let's go inside Chicago Hot Dog. You guys, Amado's with me. We're here in the kitchen at Chicago Hot Dogs. This right here is the Italian beef before it gets shredded up. This is what it looks like right when it comes out of the oven. And we're gonna learn how they're making it out here. This is an authentic recipe. It's taken a long time for you to develop this recipe, but we're gonna give us the insights. We're gonna learn okay. how this is happening out here. I'm super okay. excited. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen what it looks like when it comes out of the oven, but this right here is how it all starts. We have two different, these are inside rounds? Inside rounds, yes. Okay, and they're gonna get all seasoned up. You got some veggies off to the side as well. Yep. So what's the first thing you do? Uh, the seasoning. The seasoning, yes. okay. So you have this all pre-portioned yes. out. So you, you just open this up or what do you do? We just open it up and throw it right in here. Oh, the whole thing? The whole thing. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Just like oh. that. There you go. You can't mess this up, right? No, you because just... I already portioned it for you and put everything <laughs> that you need on there. You got some onions, it looks yes. like. Onion, there's, there's just the ends of the onions, so it gives a good flavor and some chop. So we we have a good you flavor on it. spread yours around. Yeah. I'm just gonna make it go like that. There you and go. That's what, and that's what you want. You're actually using the tops. A lot of people yeah. throw this part away. Right, which is, uh, most people do. And, and it actually is beneficiary for the beef because it gives a good flavor. Some tomatoes. Just throw it on here. There we go. That. Oregano. Oh, oregano? Yep. Nice. Okay. We do two of these. Oh, look at you. Two like that. All right, now what do you got here? This looks so like this a is fine black pepper? Or? Fine black pepper. So okay. we put one of those in there. All right, now what do you got here? Uh, is that cross, cross red? Cross red pepper. A whole thing of yes. garlic. Okay. Now so we're, we're going to do that at the same time. All right, same time. <laughs> oh, oh my water. gosh, it smells so good. Water, water is going to make sure everything gets kind okay, of... Everything gets in there and it boils in the oven and yeah. it brings all the flavor out. This is ready to rock and roll. You can see we got all the seasonings. We got everything we want inside there. Now it's yes. time to go in the oven. So what temperature yes. and how long? Okay, we just got to cover it with foil very tight and then uh -huh. it's going to go in the oven for three and a half hours. This one right here has been cooled down, ready to shave, ready to put into a sandwich. So what are you doing right here? Well, we're just going to take all the fat off, trim it off a little bit. All right, so now all the fat is trimmed off. Yes. Goes into the shaver, right? Yes, it goes right into here. So turn it on. And then we gotta find the perfect cut. So what are you looking at? What's the thickness um, of cut? You just kinda Your eyeball look at it, it, eyeball it. This is all shaved up. This is actually a really this, good yield from all yeah. that. I mean, that's a lot of meat. But this is like step one of like step 10. There's a lot more stuff that goes into making this stuff, sandwich. Yeah. Plus we're gonna try different items on the menu. I'm super excited. You ready to do it? Ready. Let's do it, Let's man. do it. Now it's time for my favorite part, Amado. You've made all this food out here. You guys are rocking it out. I mean, even during yeah. lunchtime, you guys are just killing it. You guys are a very efficient team out here. I'm gonna start with this one. This is the Italian beef sausage combo sandwich. Yes. And this is nuts. I mean, it's dipped, it's ready to rock, so it's all juicy, and look how big this thing is. That's a sandwich. <laughs> That's the bite. That was game over. <laughs> game over. 
This sandwich was worth the wait. This bite alone is the reason why I'd come back. This is a phenomenal sandwich. This is like everything you want. When you think of that Italian beef and you want that little bit of Italian sausage as well, I mean, the dipped bread that's on there, the quality of the bread, all the ingredients. This is where you go in San Antonio to get this. This is amazing. Great job, man. The Italian beef, we saw it get made from start to finish and applied onto the sandwich. This is rocking. This is a really nice product. If you're into Euro sandwiches, they got you covered out here as well. You guys are shaving it right off the Euro right, right there. Right off the Euro. And you have the pita bread right here. A little bit toasted, right? Yeah, we toasted. And then you have Make the tzatziki sauce. Tzatziki. Onions, tomatoes. And this is no joke. Look how big this thing is. That's a big, you guys aren't holding back out here. This, this Texas size Chicago food. There we go. <laughs> That's your tagline <laughs> now. There you go. <laughs> you can have that. Yeah. All right, there's the bite. Mm. They good? Very good. That is fantastic. You can tell that Amado's been cooking like this for a long time because there's a lot of flavor that goes into every little step of each sandwich and each product that they make. And you know I got to finish it off with the Chicago hot dog. We have Cheers to. to you, brother. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us out here. You got Chicago you. hot dogs. This is it. When it comes to Chicago food in San Antonio, they're making it from scratch. They have all these different items. I mean, a giant double cheeseburger. You know, all kinds of different hot dogs. A San Antonio dog and all the other food that you want as well. Drinks, yeah. this is where it's at, man. Here we go, cheers. Coming up later on Texas Eats. I mean, it's, it's the best that you want. That's what you think of when you think of really good Korean food. And next on the show, if you love cheese, you have to get the raclette. It is served table side, and it's a half a cheese wheel that's melted on top. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in San Antonio, right next to Hotel Emma, to go inside of the French restaurant Brasserie Mon Chouchou to check out their brand new brunch menu. Let's go inside. Right in front of us here, this is kind of like the spectacle that you can get when you come out here. Talk to us about this dish. So we bring the cheese from uh, France, from the French Alps. The, the raclette in France is a very classical dish uh, in Switzerland, France. Uh, it's melted cheese uh, that we traditionally serve over uh, uh, boiled potatoes or baked potatoes. Um, and uh, we usually use all kind of uh, cured meat and, uh, and French cornichons. If you love cheese, you have to get the raclette. It is served table side, and it's a half a cheese wheel that's melted on top, and they scrape it right off onto a piece of baguette and is absolutely delicious. You get some of the cured meat, a little bit of the pickle action going on. It's a really good bite. In front of us are some of the items on their new brunch menu out here. Croque Madame, which is a classic French uh, dish for brunch, you know. Uh, it's uh, an upgrade Croque Monsieur uh, version, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, sliced white bread, uh, country French uh, white bread with the uh, Mornay sauce, who has uh, a lot of Gruyere cheese, mm. uh, sliced of uh, ham and, uh, tomato and a fried egg on top. I look at the egg, cooked perfectly. All yes. the whites are just beautiful on there. You got this nice yolk in the middle and you just come in and just bust that out. Look at that. It's like another sauce, right? It's a sauce in a sauce, yeah. <laughs> It's a sauce in a sauce. A little bit of everything, all in one bite. I'm gonna dunk it right into the egg on top. Got some of the cheese action on there, a little bit of egg. That's the bite right there. That's good. If you're looking for something that's a little bit familiar for a brunch item here at Brasserie Mon Chouchou, the croque madame that comes with the egg on top is really good. And it has that tomato on the inside, so the acidity is cutting through some of the cheese, a little bit of that buttery flavor, and it's just a really good, well-rounded bite. I want to jump over to this guy right here, because this is another one that has an egg on it. It's puff pastry, a uh, very light puff pastry. Uh, we we uh, stuffed with uh, creamy uh, baby spinach, uh, 
blue crab, uh, jumbo blue crab meat. Again, it's a cream-based sauce, uh, finished with a little Old Bay. And uh, we just uh, do a, uh, a fried egg, in a, a sunny side up egg in the middle of the puff pastry. So the puff pastry, the egg, you got a little bit of that, that crab going on, on the inside. I'm gonna get a bite of this. The spinach in there, everything just looks fantastic. Go in for it. I gotta say, you guys got me using a fork and knife. I'm not a fork and knife kind of guy. I go in with my hands, so I'm being very appropriate. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, wow. Okay, that's the bite. Here we go. Wow. You get some of that lump crab, some of that cream sauce, the spinach, and the egg, and it all just dissolves in your mouth. It really just melts, and it is such a phenomenal, creamy, decadent flavor. I would definitely be coming back seven days a week for this dish right here. We're gonna jump over to a dish. This is a lobster Benedict. Yes. And good. how does this one get prepared? English uh, muffin that we toast, and it's covered with the poached eggs, soft, soft poached eggs, finished with the hollandaise. Uh, the classic Benedict has ham, uh, this one, we wanted to kind of uh, bring our own touch to it and use uh, main lobster, mm -hmm. uh, which we flambé with uh, uh, cognac, finish with a little lobster sauce, cream, and, uh, and we pour over the egg. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is the restaurant you want. You want to like get that elevated brunch experience? This is where you come to. That's a fantastic poach on there. Put some of the sauce on there. There we go, lobster Benedict, here we go. Doing it out here, man. You're doing a great job. This is delicious. The lobster Benedict out here is really rich, it's creamy, and is exactly what you want for brunch. You couple that with the mimosa, and it's game on. Give me some love. Brasserie Mon Chouchou, new menu items out here for brunch. You gotta come try them out. Get the cocktails. You gotta have the drinks. I got three drinks out here. And it's just gonna blow your mind. Whatever dish you decide to get, I highly recommend the lump crab dish. This one right here is just so flavorful. Thank you so much, Chef, for having us out here. My pleasure. Mm. sample the best food in Texas, you know we gotta stop at Circle K to grab a coffee and kolaches. And right now, all you have to do is scan the QR code on the screen and sign up for the Sip and Save program for $5.99 a month, and you get one coffee a day for the entire month. How incredible is that? We're gonna put our cup down, touch the screen, it's gonna start grinding and making the coffee right in front of you. And you guys, right now, these kolaches are only two for $4. They also have non-sugar sweeteners, they also have iced coffees as well, and check this out. Coffee is ready to rock and roll. Come out to Circle K, grab some kolaches, grab your coffee, and sign up for the Sip and Save program, because this is how Texas drinks. <laughs> That's the biggest calzone I've ever seen in my life. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here on the far west side of San Antonio to check out a newish pizza spot that actually opened back up in March, but they got some really amazing stuff on the menu. And get this, they have a massive calzone that they call the half shell. It's like an homage to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's gigantic. They're gonna be making that, a meatball sandwich, and a pizza. Let's go check it out. How long have you been cooking pizzas, sir? Man, about... All my life, that's why I'm a bit chubby. No, um, <laughs> so I, you know, I was born in the like late late '80s, so I'm a Ninja Turtle guy. Um, <laughs> started trying to make it when I was like 14, 15 in my mom's kitchen. But professionally, I've been doing it for nine years. I actually went to New York to study to learn how to do all of this. Now you grew up in Del Rio, right? Yep. So how long have you been in San Antonio? Nine years. Nine years. No, I, um, I went to school for about eight years. I don't know how they let me be in university that long. <laughs> <laughs> Went back home, 27, got married, had two kids, and then seven years passed, and I'm over here now. Do you make all this from scratch? Everything. What's everything? Like everything. Like all our meats, some, the cheeses we get in a block, we cut them, tomato sauces, we open them, we cut them up, we do garlic, everything. What 
kind of wood you use? Oak. Oak wood. Yeah, but we've been we've been since like 10, so right now it's just the embers slowing down right now. All right, so now I'm gonna try the pizza, okay? And look at this thing. I mean, it looks phenomenal. I'm super excited. Here we go. With the cheese on the bottom, it almost upholds the integrity of the dough better than if you put sauce on there. It's a great crunch. And this one's kind of like a meat lover. You've got the meatball, the sausage, the pepperoni. I put the jalapenos on there as well. But I mean, everything, the sauce, the bread, the cheese, this is bomb. And you know, the sausage and the, and the meatballs are all made here. This is like one of those food challenges I give you. <laughs> if you finish it, I'll give it to you for free. You know? <laughs> What well, average meal is what? About uh, half a pound of food, right? Yeah. This is gonna be about five pounds easily with the This dough. is like a five pound calzone. Easily. What we're doing is a light layer of sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a double pizza, you know? Oh my God. I don't think I've ever seen cheese on top of a calzone. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> that paddle gonna hold it? I hope. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Right there, beautiful. This is probably the greatest thing I've ever seen. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> All right, joining me right now is Tony. He just walked into the pizza spot and he saw this massive calzone covered in cheese and sauce and pepperoni. Are you ready for this? I'm ready, bro. All right, dude, let's take a bite, man. <laughs> pizza um, cheers. I don't, know, I don't know where to start. <laughs> This thing's massive. Look at this slice. Oh my God. So good, man. It's so good. If you guys want to come out here and get the half shell, an homage to the Teenage Ninja Turtles and their love for pizza, this is a spot to come to, man. Lou's Wood Fired Pizza. It's the only place I know of where you can get something like this. This is like a crazy creation. Yes, sir. Plus you get the sandwich, plus you get the regular pizza that's already off the chain. This is a cool spot. They also got beer in here, so you can grab some beer when you're on your way out, drinks, and you can come in here and you can dine. Tony, nice meeting you, brother. I'm gonna keep eating. Nice meeting you, too. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back after the break. to Texas Eats. Now we're in Houston, Texas to go inside of a restaurant operated by MasterChef Season 3 winner, Christine Ha. Joining me now is Christine Ha. She's the executive chef and partner out here at The Blind Goat. And in front of us is a little bit of everything that's on the menu. These are like the top items you want to get when you come out here. And I really want to talk about you though first, because you have such a fascinating story and what a journey in the culinary world. I mean, you were the season three winner of Master Chef. That's right. So you can't tell. I don't have my cane on me, but I am visually impaired. But I, you know, was brave enough to audition for Master Chef season three back in 2012, and then won that whole season, and then that kind of launched me into this culinary uh, career, I guess. And you know, the Blind Goat is my first restaurant. I call it my first baby. So here we are. And these dishes, these are the ones that everybody just raves about when they talk about the blind goat here in Houston. And this first one that's in front of me, steak and eggs. Well, we take like a very uh, different approach to steak and eggs. We serve the uh, ribeye uh, marinated in a bunch of uh, nice oh. different uh, sauces. So oh. that it's like a balance of sweet, salty. And then we actually serve it with pate, some French bread, a fried egg, some Maggi sauce. So we shave a little bit of raclette cheese on top to add even yes. more uh, unctuousness. It's, it's so gooey. I'm over here like trying to get a little piece of it. It's just so gooey. This is the steak and eggs out here, and that's the bite. Mm. Wow. 
the steak and eggs out here at the Blind Goat are unlike any other steak and eggs you're gonna find at a brunch spot. And this place is just loading it up with all kinds of traditional Vietnamese flavors, but with a modern American twist. It's so unctuous. Yeah. Very great use of, of a fat on yeah. there. And you know, fat is flavor. Yes, exactly. That's what mm. I always say. And then the steak, the raclette cheese, you have a little bit of the tomato on there as well. But you mix all that together with a little bit of the pate, out of control. The second sauce you're getting from that egg yolk as well, yeah. out of control. Now this dish is your carpaccio. Yes. Talk to me about what's going on here. It looks very fresh. So this dish is actually something that we actually open the restaurant with. Typically the beef is cured in lime juice, but here we like to do a light sear on it to get a little bit more of that uh, char flavor. And then we toss it in a vinaigrette and then uh, there's roasted peanuts. And then we threw in on the side your puff prawn chips. There's definitely heat to this dish too because we use some like Thai chili peppers in there. So. Oh goodness, here we go. This is the beef carpaccio. I've already had a little bite. This is a bigger bite right here. Wow. Oh, there's the heat. Woo! I love the flavors on there. The vinegar is so pronounced, but it gets rounded out with the freshness of the greens. And then you do have that little bit of fat that comes off the beef, but it's a very thin cut. It's a very, it's, there's not a lot of fat on it, but you're getting the fat flavor and a little crunch from the peanuts on there as well. I mean, that's just fun yep. and addicting. Now this is the bibimbap. My husband is Korean, and this is kind of like a comfort Korean food dish where um, you know you've got your rice that's piled on top with like a spicy gochujang sauce, which is like a red, a fermented red pepper paste, and then it's got like pickled cucumbers, your your beef that's uh, seared as well in a in the bulgogi sauce. There we go. That's the bite. Mm. Oh, that's rocking. The kimchi, it really takes over but it steers the ship and like everything else is just on board to like really just kick it to the next level. Yeah. And then on the bottom, the rice is really tender. I mean, it's it's the best that you want. That's what you think of when you think of really good Korean food. That's what you want to get. Now, this is not your typical apple pie. Talk to me about this dish. So during my season of MasterChef, there's this famous moment that everyone seems to know if they've watched my season. <laughs> Me making an apple pie for like the second time in my life. I get the pie into the oven 18 minutes before the challenge is over and I serve it to Gordon. Because I'm visually impaired, I have no idea what my pie looks like. When he asked me, what do I think it looks like? I say, I think it looks like a pile of rubbish. It actually turned out really good though. But then now as a joke, like we've added a rubbish apple pie on my <laughs> menu. What we do is instead of doing your traditional American apple pie spices, we swap out some of them for some more Southeast Asian spices. Mm -hmm. The kicker is that the caramel on top, instead of doing a salty caramel, we do a fish sauce caramel. I know it's gonna be delicious. People wouldn't be going crazy for it if it wasn't, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it sounds weird, it sounds okay? Weird. It sounds I know. weird. I know. It smells really good. It's the pile of rubbish apple pie. Yeah. Wow. If you've ever had apple pie, you've never had it like this. They're using traditional Vietnamese sauces and incorporating it with sweet, sugary goodness that you're used to with an apple pie and that caramel sauce. And they're putting it all on top. The pastry is super flaky. The inside is nice and creamy as well good flavors on there, nice textures. But overall, I mean, this thing is killer. And it's like the ultimate dessert bite that you didn't know you needed. That's probably one of the strangest bites that just works. But it's an apple pie, an Americana bite. Yeah. That's so cool. Good on you, that's fun. Absolutely incredible, you guys. The Blind Goat out here in Houston, Texas. You want to get a little bit of Vietnamese, you can get some Korean food, and you can have a whole lot of fun. This is a spot to do it. Thank you so much for having us yeah, out Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to keep eating. we got egg rolls somewhere. Oh, there they are. While I'm exploring restaurants around the Lone Star State, there's only one way to tell people how good the food really is. Shiner. Shiner, the official beer of Texas Eats. Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're traveling all across the Lone Star State pairing great food with ice cold Shiner beer. And that's why we're here in downtown San Antonio to go inside Pinkerton's Barbecue to see what they got cooking up. Mm -hmm. 
Joining me now is the owner and pit master out here at the restaurant, Grant Pinkerton. Thank you so much for having me out here, awesome, brother. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming. And now, we've been out here before, but we got to come back because you offer Shiner products. You also have fantastic barbecue. So I want to know, what are the item on the menu? Which been the most popular since you opened here in San Antonio? I think San Antonio loves the brisket, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how can you go wrong with the beef? Yeah, you, you can't go wrong with the beef right there. Now, we have some different options on this platter right in front of us. You got your hit side items, plus the proteins that are just going to knock you out of this world, including the ribs. You even have a special glaze you put on top of them, We right? do. We just got it into uh, HEB. It's the signature famous company to rib glaze. We're going to take it out right here. <laughs> I think we got to make David eat some of that. Yes, sir. Come on. All right. Before we eat the glaze, I'm going to pop up with a shiner. Grab a shiner with me here. Cheers to you. That's the bite. Oh, my goodness. Don't get more perfect than that. Wow. When you pour that sauce on the ribs, it takes it to that next level. It's a little sweet. It's got a nice kick to it. And it has kind of that tackiness that you want that's going to stay stuck onto that rib. The meat's just falling off the bone. You give it a nice tug. These ribs are rocking. Now, the sauce is available at HEB, but you can only get these ribs here at Pinkerton's. Yeah, we call this the rib candy. <laughs> They're candy paint ribs. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I'm going to take another bite, and I'm going back in. Wow. That's pretty fantastic, right? Pretty good combo. <laughs> so what does it mean to have Shiner a part of your business? Well, one of the things that's really important to us is we want we want to be Texas forward, right? And you can't have good Texas barbecue without good Texas beer, and that's Shiner Bog. The ribs are phenomenal. Like you said, the brisket's the one, though. I'm just going hands on it. Now, you got some burnt ends in the front. Absolutely. You got some fatty slices going on. Which one do you recommend I try? Man, I think this piece right here is going to be the real this, winner. This one right there? Yep. All right, right in the middle. I mean, how can you go wrong with a burnt end, right? Look, at, Look that. at the juice on there. And now, you have other sauces available as well that are also going to be featured inside of HEB coming Absolutely. up soon. What do, you, what do you got over there? We got our classic original sauce. This thing <laughs> is taken grand champion in Memphis and May twice. Look at this. Oh my goodness. The burn in bites, sauce right here, that's the bite. Oh my God. Perfect compliment. It just melts in your mouth. You don't have to put sauce on the brisket. It's Texas. I know, it's like blasphemy, right? But I tell you what, you add some of their mustard based sauce onto their brisket, and it's just phenomenal. It's that little vinegar punch you want, a little bit of spice on there as well. But the burnt ends has that perfect bark on there. Even the slices has that nice smoke ring on there, bark on the outside, nice and fatty when you get the marbled slices like that. I mean, you only need like one piece, and it's gonna do you good. What's the top side item? Man, I think everybody loves mac and cheese. You know, how can you go wrong? I'm kind of biased because that's my potato salad recipe. <laughs> okay. You know, so it's not it's not a barbecue if you don't have potato salad, uh, according to me. All right, the potato salad. It's Grant's recipe. It I'm is. Gonna, all right, I'm going to take a bite. It's just like Grandma made. Mm. Yeah, the beans, too. Talk to me about your beans. What makes them special? Yeah, these are kind of, I call them my South Texas beans. They were... Uh, Born on the ranch while we were deer hunting, we just opened the cabinet up, had some ingredients in there, threw them together, and then boom, the beans were made. They're a ranch style. Um, they have poblanos, tons of garlic, a bunch of bacon, a good uh, pork lard uh, base. Yeah. You know, mac and cheese, beans, the jambalaya. You also have the house-made potato salad on the side. It is so good. It's kind of that crispy, ice cold bite you want to kind of counteract all that barbecue that you're eating. It is delicious. Everything on the sides, you can't go wrong. Even add some more proteins and some more sauce on top of those if you want to get a little crazy. But the mac and cheese is a winner. Grant, you have so many things going on out here. And you also, I mean, you're from Houston. Right. So you have the original location out there. You're here in San Antonio. But you're like still traveling around, competing all over the place. You got a lot going on, right? We got a lot going on. It's going to be a busy couple months. You know, this is competition season, and we got to make Texas proud. That's right. In order to do that as well, you get your barbecue, you come out here, you enjoy yourself. And if you're feeling in the spirit, I highly recommend grabbing an ice cold Shiner when you're enjoying this barbecue out here. Because that's the way you do it. You say it with Shiner. It doesn't get much more Texas than that. Absolutely. I'm going to keep eating all this barbecue. But you guys got to come check out Pinkerton's in downtown San Antonio. Plus, in Houston, they're also out there killing it too. Hmm. All right, I'm going in now. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Austin, Texas to go inside of an Austin-based burger stand that is expanding all across the Lone Star State. Let's go inside P. Terry's Burger Stand. Joining me now is the founder of P. Terry's Burger Stand. It's Patrick Terry. <laughs> <laughs> It's the man, the P and, and P Terry's, or Patrick. How exciting is I know, <laughs> we get to talk to you. This is, is why we came out here, right here. This is the burger that everybody loves in Austin. I hope so. You've become like, just like a household name up here. Yeah, we've been very lucky. It's been a great 16 years, and uh, Austin embraced us early on to, um, and, and allowed us to do what we've done. You guys have been so successful in this market for so long. You're jumping around now. You're going to be reaching out to different markets. Right. San Antonio is yeah. getting a P. Terry's. Yeah, we couldn't How be. How cool is that? Uh, well, we couldn't be more excited. I mean, we've we've had our sights on Alamo City for years, <laughs> and it was just a matter of getting there. All the different burgers. You have a single. You have a double. You have a specialty burger that you introduce and you rotate throughout the year. Plus the chicken sandwich. Yeah. Fresh produce on the inside as well. Tomatoes, lettuce. A little so, sauce on so there. Special sauce. Special sauce. That's right. That's and I right. love the size of these because it's a perfect amount. If you're feeling pretty hung uh, hungry, you can probably get like two if you're feeling crazy, but one's going to do you. Yeah. And you get the fries on the side too. That's right. And it's about six ounces of beef on that double with two slices of cheese. This is the double out here at Pete Terry's going in for it. Yeah, thank That's you. Well, there you go. Simple, Ooh. simple. Nothing complicated. A little salt and pepper mm. on the beef. This is definitely one of the top fast food burger spots you can visit in Central and South Texas. I love the cheese on here, it melted to perfection. The fresh produce has such a nice crisp bite to it. You can tell it's just sliced right there. Yeah. And then the bread, I mean, it has a nice little toast on there as well. That's crucial, you yeah. gotta toast the bread. You do, and it's, it's a signature bun, it's our own recipe. Chicken sandwiches are so popular. Yeah. And is this something you guys started with or is this something you added on later? We just we just added it on a year ago. Look at that, pickles on there. You got a little bit of the dressing, tomatoes, lettuce all on top. You got a little bit of, is that a, like a, a Monterey Jack? Or? Yeah, yep, that's exactly what we okay. did. And yep. then a little bit of crispy chicken yep. on there. Toasted buns, here we go, going in for the bite. I wanna get, for... I'm losing some of my, I'm gonna put it back on. All right. Crispy chicken sandwich, here we go. You can get the original chicken sandwich. It's not spicy at all. It comes with the pickles on there. There's sauce, lettuce, tomatoes, and the cheese. You can also get the spicy version. Check that out. This bad boy is gonna have a little kick to it. Give it a bite. Hmm. Hmm. Just enough heat to give it some more flavor, but not too much. And just a great bite. The crunch on these chicken sandwiches is just killer. Pete Terry's known all throughout Austin. Now they're traveling outside and they're gonna be in, in San Antonio very soon. Look out for him on there, follow him on social media. I gotta go in for another bite of this double. I mean, that's just Dude, a good burger jumping. bun. But thank, thank you. you so much, Patrick. Well, thank Appreciate you. your Thanks time. For having us. And we're super excited to have you we'll in San see Antonio. You in San Antonio. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information and a map on all the restaurants that we've been to on the show, just go to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Texas Eats TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas Eats.